Hi, I'm Owen from REST Australia. Thanks for tuning in to the REST Network. Before we get into today's show, there are a few things we have to go over. Firstly, what you're about to hear and see is limited to general information only. It's not personal financial advice like you'd get from a financial planner. Also, it's important to remember that past performance is not indicative of future performance. That means that anything that's happened in the past, or we say today, is not necessarily going to reflect what happens in the future. Lastly, please consider that any of the guests or myself are featuring on this program may have a financial interest in some of the products or shares mentioned. That's enough from me. I hope you enjoyed today's program. Hello and welcome to this episode of the Australian Finance Podcast. Kate, it's always a pleasure. It's good to be back, Owen, for another special episode that we're trying to do again that we did last year. Oh, this year? I can't even remember now. I, I think it was, year. it maybe was last year, but then most people will listen to it this year, mm. but we're talking about next year. Uh, so we've got a lot of years that we're just jumping around with here. <laughs> what we're actually talking about today is 22 ways to save and invest your money in 2022. And why are we doing this episode again, Kate? Well, apart from it being our most popular episode this year, our 21 ways to save and invest your money in 2021, it's a good way to just get some inspiration and think of some other things to do with your money next year because a lot of us are setting our financial goals at the moment. Um, you may have heard our financial goals episode last week or the week before. Um, so yeah, it's just good to get some ideas, some inspiration. 22 puts a nice number on it. So yes. um Yes, we do love to start and end in the same numbers. So 21 ways to save in 2021, 22 ways to save and invest in 2022. And it also happened to be one of our most popular episodes of all time. Yes, I think people which was very love surprising. It, love it. Yeah. I love these things. I love like the cheat sheet to doing these types of things. Um, last year, there were two that stood out for mm. me. One was your parents splitting a large coffee rather than ordering two small coffees. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the key there is that you are both willing to share a drink and you both drink the same thing. Yeah. But if you do, makes sense. It had to be someone you would be you're COVID safe with, COVID you know, safe. so yeah, maybe you may a partner, exchange not your some um, saliva. office colleague. <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, we could try. Uh, <laughs> so the other thing is uh, fish fingers are a great meal just to... Well, I didn't say they were a healthy meal. I just said, said they were like a convenient... No calories, 100% yeah. good protein and fats must eat in 2021 and yes. here we are look at us so healthy as a result of this fish finger yeah, diet. i actually haven't had many fish fingers in the last six months i moved on to crumbed freezer fish. Crumbed chicken. we were <laughs> talking about this is it actually fish yeah i'm pretty sure it is but um yeah i'm sure someone will be able to tell me i'm wrong yeah okay well if we have any um fish finger connoisseurs or um frozen fish connoisseurs please let us know speaking of if people want to reach out and share their ideas with us for this list or to add to the list for next year, where would they go and do that? Absolutely. So if you want to share your ideas for saving and investing your money in 2022, oh, that's a mouthful. I'm going to have to get used to it. Uh, head to our Facebook community and share your ideas in there because you just never know who it might help. And even if you want some inspiration and you're like, oh, I want some ideas to um, save some money next year, just ask it in our Facebook community and there'll be plenty of people willing to help you. And oh, and it might even chime in there. Oh, yes, I do. Occasionally. <laughs> I find it's easier to respond with video yeah, because there's so much uh, i want to say in these in these you get a glimpse into his office that you way can, yes i actually took down the posters so uh. for the for the sharp-eyed um <laughs> rask listener and um community member they may have seen some posters in the background of the Owen office thought they were very funny i thought they were hilarious they were ordered off Redbubble. let's just say they were not pg okay so um today we've got 22 items on this yep. list of 22 ways to save and invest your money in 2022 so they, they are different to last year so what yep. that means is if you love this episode go back and listen to that one because there were so many great things other than just coffee and fish fingers so um i don't what, think I'll look maybe that one what down. we can do is you go i go with this yep. and We'll just chime in along the way. There are 22, so we'll try and be concise. Yes. But um, it's a bit of fun. So here goes. Write down your favorite ones. Um, there is an article to accompany this if you forget. So you can copy and paste that or share that with a friend if you like. Kate, over to you for number one. Yep. So the first half are all going to be about saving money in 2022, which is very important. And a mm -hmm. lot of us might want to be doing that after we've had a bit of a fun Christmas. Mm -hmm. So the first one is to reduce, swap and pause your regular expenses. And that's just going through and checking all of your accounts, anything that you've signed up for during the last year that 
maybe it was appropriate for COVID, but maybe you don't need five streaming services in 2022 when you're actually going out and having fun in real life. Mm -hmm. Uh, So just do a a bank account audit, go through your cards, your statements, um, any of those Apple recurring subscriptions, which I always forget about because you actually have to go into your iCloud account. Um, they're, They're a bit pesky, but... Yeah, just go through and do a full refresh and work out what you actually want uh, to spend money on next year and just be intentional about it. Don't just let them take the money. And if they do, um, say, uh, renew your annual subscription, you go, oh, shit, I didn't actually want that. Send them a message. A lot of them might yeah. pro rata, give you maybe six months of a refund. Some of the big brands are just like, oh, whatever, we'll just give them the 12 months money back. So, um, yeah, just have a go, try and get the feedback. This reminds me of um, reduce recycle reuse or reduce reuse recycle um it's such a good thing to do Mm. just having an audit of what you've got um just being conscious on um i guess those things that become part of your routine which probably don't need to be i was just thinking as you said apple subscriptions yeah i think i've got an apple fitness plus subscription and i haven't logged into it i did the free trial yeah for three months yeah yeah i know you use it but i was like i need to set a reminder for this to cancel and actually apple sent a reminder to say your free trial is expiring soon so easy way to do it another way is you can accidentally lose your 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 bank card yeah and basically what happens is when you when your bank card gets cancelled it resets the expiry date and you get all of these emails yeah, from the all different of the emails you that about. say yeah. hey you we still want you as a loyal customer but your credit card isn't is, isn't working so that's an easy way to kind of just have a detox and i think christmas is a really good time to yeah. do this i know i'm going to be reviewing who i bank with for personal banking because yeah. i'm kind of sick of you know, I've got a good bank, which is ING, but I'm just going to make sure that they're still competitive in the market. Yeah. Number two is use cashback and savings websites. We we're just talking about this off air. We've all heard of things like Honey, Cash Rewards. There are a bunch of others. And these were really popular in our community when they, yeah. when they identified 10 ways to save. Mm. Um, you don't use Cash Rewards, do you? Uh, I think I used it a while back, but I've been because I've been supporting a lot of small businesses this Christmas, they don't um, have cash rewards for that. So, um, and going in store, I don't know if you can use cash rewards in store, if there's a way to implement that. There's probably is something out there like an app. I think Mm. you could use the loyalty things like the the, the digital wallets that you get. They might have um, loyalty. Uh, I I don't actually use it, so I wouldn't know. But I know a lot of people do. The cashback stuff is is really popular in our community. So Mm -hmm. if you do have any tips for that, if you can use it in store, we'd love to know what you think and tell us where you've used it. The one that we were talking about before, which you're now going to... I have installed on my browser this morning. Yeah, which is Honey. We've talked about this a lot. I was even using an example with the team before that I was just on a, a website just ordering some flowers of all things and I thought this is never going to have any type of coupon code or thing that I could save money yeah. on. And it was $55 and up popped Honey and it said, we found three coupon codes. And I just clicked the button and it's like, here, here's the best coupon code. You get, I think it was 10 or $15 off and I got free delivery. So I was like, wow, okay. This is just, this honey costs nothing. Yeah. So I thought that was just a huge thing. Uh, if you are ordering things online, maybe use your, your computer with honey installed. Yeah. That's Every time you talk tip. about honey, I always think you sound like one of those YouTube influencers <laughs> just because I've heard it advertised so much. Is that but- how it's done, is it? Yeah, they, they're everywhere. They've oh, right. done a lot of advertising. And we are not affiliated with Honey, which is now owned by <laughs> PayPal, although I do own PayPal shares, so I am a very oh, well, happy camper. Go. If you do sign up for Honey, thank you very much. <laughs> um, that's my only conflict there. Number three, Kate. Yeah, so third one is using Roundup savings apps and things like, I think we've mentioned this before, but things like Up, no, what am I saying? ING. Yep. They have features where you can turn on a Roundup feature or even um, Raise. That's yep. more of an investment. Raise app, does it. But yep. um, just those small change and those small amounts throughout the year can really add up, especially because we don't use cash. No one's putting the spare change in a money box anymore. So uh, that 50 cents, a dollar here and there, you're not going to miss. But it could actually add up towards maybe if you start saving for your Christmas presents next year. Hmm. Um, that's something that really easily you could use this tool to do. Or even setting a... Um, if your bank doesn't offer that feature, like say on UpBank, I might create what I did last year, just created a, um, a bank account, like a folder, um, which was a savings account for my Christmas presents for the following year. And you could just set up a $10 a week, just a regular yeah. contribution into that account. So you actually have some more money there at Christmas time and it doesn't come as a complete shock. Did the bank account that you set up have an emoji? Yes, it was a Christmas tree. Okay. that's um, that Kate tells me, Kate assures me, that's one of the key features of Up, <laughs> other than a free coffee every now and again, too, which is pretty cool. Um, 
Yeah, so and you do you do that with giving as well, with donations yeah. and that sort of stuff, right? So that's it was a way to make it a bit more intentional. Having I just love how Up has all those folders that you can create. Yeah. So having one for even this year, I just sort of created one for like gift giving and flowers because I was doing this for friends and family on a regular basis and um, putting money aside for effective giving each month after we spent time talking to Peter Singer yep. and it kind of inspired me to do that and putting money aside for Christmas presents. So when it got to that time, I actually had the money put aside and I didn't have to think about it mm. and I automated all this. So it just happened magically in the background and when it came to Christmas presents shopping this year, it was very easy. The so money you, was there. So when you say automated, um, sometimes, you know, when you get your pay, it can be like the, the last day of the month, the mm. first day of the next month. Sometimes it bounces around. Does Up automatically know when money comes in and then it distributes it? Is yeah. that how it works? You can set up so it recognizes your employer and it will dis- split or distribute the money on uh, to however you've set it up when you, your, your pay comes in. So it hmm. can actually recognize that because cool. most of us aren't getting that kind of big sum of money on a regular basis from anybody else. Yeah. So it just it can recognize your employer. It will say like, is this your employer? And you can tick yes. And then it knows it's coming in each month. Um, I'm not sure if any other banks do that, but definitely let us know in the, the Facebook community yeah. if they do. But UP has been really helpful just in terms of saving and having your paycheck automatically split yeah. when you get paid each month. Kate is pro automation. Yes. Dollar cost averaging. And it simplifies the everything. decisions you have to yeah. make because there's so many other financial decisions we have to make. It's thinking about moving money manually every month is just one that you can take out of that equation. Mm. Wonderful. Okay, so that was number three. Now we're up to number four. Next in line is find a better deal on your health insurance, which is, you know, it's one of those things that you might think, oh, it's such a drag. Yeah. But it does help. We were just talking about how we both have health insurance and we can get glasses for 30 bucks. Now that's covered by the extras policy, not by the actual hospital cover, which is what helps you to save on tax. The extras is literally extras. It's Mm -hmm. like a... It actually is a form of savings. Mm. So people think that the extras part is health insurance. It's actually not. It's actually that that's the benefits or sa- uh, the savings part. The hospital cover is the actual legitimate one recognized yeah. by the government for saving tax. And one final thing on this, you can have extras with someone else and hospital cover with another insurer. So you don't have to have them at the same place, which is really interesting. Um, so something to keep in mind. So find a better deal on your health insurance. Um, we're with HCF and... We managed to get a great deal this year. We just started with them this year Mm. because through my partner's employer, they offered um, to waive the waiting periods and they paid, if you went to hospital, the $500 excess uh, for private hospitals. So Mm. we were like, well, we just might as well go with this. It's all comparable in terms of cover. Um, No waiting periods. It was, I think it was a little bit cheaper too. So... That was a good reason to mm. just look at it and go, yeah, sure. Let's, and that's why it's always over. worth checking with your employer, especially if you're at a larger company that they might have um, deals or they might have some sort of discount with a particular health insurance fund. Like even some of the large American companies, yep. because they're used to including health insurance, sometimes they include that um, in Australia. So it's definitely worth asking the question if there's yeah. some sort of deal or cash yep. back they'll give you. And like, even if you use, so we have sometimes been a bit scathing of um, – We've been a bit scathing of comparison sites, but at the end of the day, they do actually have a pretty strong role to play. Like I select um, choices, like kind of pro member, uh, I select makes that that commission, but there are plenty of others like that. Like I think Finder does it too. And uh, there's of course the government one, which is private health, which is the one that I tend to use. But if you do use choice, uh, so, sorry, I select, you can actually call them yeah. and they will explain the policy to you. And what, why that is important is because if you have pre-existing conditions, they're not doctors, they're not, they don't know your health information, so no. but let's say, for example, someone in your family had cancer or you had cancer or you had some you know, ongoing medical mm. condition, you want to make sure that the new fund will cover that. Yeah. Typically, it's like for like, as in typically if you have, you know, um, say hernia, you've had a hernia operation and it's covered by your current policy, you can carry that over, but that's not always the case. Mm. So just make sure that you speak to them if that is you, if you fall into that unfortunate bucket of having something that's ongoing. So great one. And one final point on this, which would nip in the bud, is that in Victoria, you need separate cover for an ambulance. Now, in other states like New South Wales, you often get your ambulance cover through your private health insurance. Don't be fooled, however, for thinking that because you have private health insurance in your state, you have ambulance cover. And don't be fooled into thinking that 
if you have it, it covers you in a different state. Yeah. You want to make sure you understand that ambulance cover is separate. There are reciprocal rights, I believe, with a few mm. of them. So just look on the website. I have an Ambulance Victoria membership. This It's super cheap yeah. and worth it. Um, and I also have private health insurance, just to put it out there. Yeah, and it can be packaged in. So yeah, I think it. with my private health and extras ambulance is included yep. when I when I last checked um but that's just, just be careful and just make sure that it actually covers you between hospitals as well sometimes yeah. there are catches there is um, that like private transport that's yep. it private between transport the- yeah exactly so um that's number four number five is a bit of fun yeah so considering gig economy work I think a lot of mm. us have changed our perceptions and ideas about work over the last two years and have thought, hey, maybe I want a bit of extra flexibility or I want to start putting some more money aside for that trip to Europe maybe in 2023 or 2024. Yep. Um, so maybe if you do have a goal considering, hey, for six months I'm going to work um, one extra day a week at a cafe on the weekend. Pretty much every cafe I've been to in the last few weeks has hiring, had a I'm hiring sign Isn't on it. Crazy. Um, maybe t- taking extra work on Airtasker or doing Uber Eats deliveries or renting out a room on Airbnb. These things don't have to be forever. You could just say, I'm going to do it for six months to get $2,000 extra from my emergency fund or to pay off this debt or um, to save for this trip. So they mm. don't have to be never-ending side hustles. You could just do it to, to meet a particular goal. And obviously, we're not reinventing the wheel here when we say that if you're a student, for example, you're studying, you're doing undergrad, postgrad, you're doing whatever, this is a mm. fantastic way to pick up a little bit of cash. Yeah. Um, for those of you that are quite handy, for example, Airtask is the one you want to go with. You can go on there. You can help me put my IKEA together. You can help me pretty yes, much do anything. there is a strong demand for putting IKEA furniture <laughs> yes, together. There is, there is an IKEA certified thing on there. I didn't realize. I think it's just a thing that they made up, but that's what they say anyway. But Uber is another one. Um, Uber can be a bit prickly sometimes because, I mean, if you're doing Uber Eats, it's not so bad. But if you're driving, obviously you need a car. Yeah. And you might want to think about how you finance that. It can be a bit, uh, bit more of a, a mm. mouthful. Airbnb obviously is a fantastic way to let out space. What's interesting about each of these three things, and this, the reason that these three things exist, in my opinion, is that from an economics perspective, just let me get geeky for a second. There was all this supply. There were cars driving around mm. the streets. There were free rooms at houses or hotels or wherever. And there's people with free time. And what we've done with the internet and that is we've enabled people to take some of that time and fulfill it with something meaningful. So I think this is, a, this, is a, this is a great way to add some extra value. And also it's a good thing for society to have this option available to you if you need a bit of cash. Number six. Number six. And this is more to myself than anyone else, but actually get your <laughs> tax returns yeah. sorted out. Uh, if you're using an accountant, you do have a bit longer, yep. which is what I'm doing, but I actually need to go and put all the stuff into place. I, uh, mm. Yeah, I've been a bit lax on that um, between mm. studies. So um, if you are the person like me that's been putting all of this off, actually spend some time this summer going through um, – if you've put off multiple years of tax returns, maybe start doing something about that this summer as well um, and figure out what your deductions are. Even learn some of the basics of tax so you know next year what you can claim. And if you're yeah. working from home, there's additional things to know about that we mentioned in the episodes of Jacob. Yeah, that's it. There were, we did some great episodes towards the end of the, the financial year. Just so you know, if you're doing your tax return now, like as in the end of 2021, start of 2022, you are, I'm almost certain you'll be going from the the year, the financial year or tax year ended 30 June 2021. So those episodes are still super relevant to yeah. you, even if you're filling it out now. Just just because it was published in June or July doesn't mean that that doesn't doesn't apply. Those are the episodes you should listen to. Yeah. And Jacob goes into depth about office expenses, gig economy work, mm. dr- driving for Uber, you know, all the things that you can claim. And this is a massive, massive opportunity for you to save money, get money back. Yeah. And if you are getting a tax refund, I don't think I am. I think I'm going to have to pay some tax. But um, if you are getting a tax refund, that's a a good way to bolster your goals for 2022 and put some money in your emergency fund, paying off debt, maybe invest for the first time. So You know what, Kate? I pride myself on understanding people's incentives. I feel like I have a good way of reading people and isn't it fascinating that if you think you're going to get a refund how much quicker you do your tax return than if you think you're going to have to pay money yeah it's inevitable either way but it's a fantastic it's probably thing. why i've been putting it off <laughs> it's a sight to behold when the when the, the humans run to the accountant versus kind of drag their feet in yeah um number seven which is one it's a throwback a bit yes but i, I so, think so, i had to add it in <laughs> i think you had to throw this one in so maybe you can you can chuck it in there yes so having easy i won't mention 
the fish fingers again, but having <laughs> frozen easy meals instead of Uber Eats, yep. um, that has been something that I've done a lot in the last yeah. year and just having simple solutions that are ready to go, whether you just cook a heap of bolognese and put mm. it in the freezer or you have a few frozen meals, one of those frozen pizzas, uh, just so that when you have a late night, which we might have in 2022, who knows? Yeah, who knows we might actually to get, get to go yeah, out. No curfew. Uh, you get home, you're feeling exhausted, you're hungry, but you just can't be bothered. You know you've got that really cheap solution, easy, ready to go. Even even our nutritionist episode, having yeah. the tin of chickpeas so or some tuna that was so good i yeah. mean that doesn't sound that enticing to me on on, on a late night after i come home but, after you have a few drinks uh, um, tuna and chickpeas yeah um, but just uber eats mm. has gone up so much the restaurants yeah. aren't getting a great cut from it the yeah. delivery fees are more expensive so just have a simple solution um so you can stay on track with your budget even if it's a late night one of the things that uh as tim right that said in that yeah. episode he said that meal prep is such a fantastic way to both eat healthier and to save money mm. you can get and i i'm gonna bang on about this but you can make something out of just simple veggies yeah. for like two or three dollars like it's and it can be tasty add some herbs and whatever boom done love it i actually i'm i actually was extra extra lazy today and i got frozen veggies out of the freezer i had some stuff left over from dinner the other night but just the frozen veggies just beef out the uh beef out the meal that i have here in the office so number eight is Pack snacks for the plane when traveling domestically. This came from a community suggestion and I can't remember the name. No. But um, it was a fantastic one and one that I have done in the past. And you, I think this one blew your mind because it's yeah, like, Yeah, I just oh never my, thought about I it. I can take Maggi or, you know, me Goreng on the plane with me and just ask them for hot water. Yeah. Simple. The food's already not great, so you may as well have noodles. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. And it's it doesn't add to your weight limit because it's literally noodles, which is... <laughs> Basically nothing. And uh, you actually got a note in here. It said, instead of paying for some overpriced peanuts when you jet off to Byron Bay, take a cup of noodles on the plane with you and ask for a cup of hot water. Bam, instant meal for a few bucks and you'll be feeling very clever. Funny thing is I am actually going to Byron Bay for Christmas and I thought... (laughs) Classic. Yeah, you're going to do it? <laughs> Classic. I think you need to take a photo and report back I to would the have community. To. Yeah, I'd have yeah. to. Yeah. So I will not buy the, the peanuts. Although I've got to admit, I think you know this. I'm a sucker for the mainland cheese and crackers on a oh. flight. Oh, it's like routine you for me. You can buy them like, for a couple of dollars at the supermarket. I know, get it from 7-Eleven like, as well. Yeah. But if I did, that would be dangerous because I'd eat them every day. So <laughs> kudos to mainland I for making really good Christmas. cheese and crackers <laughs> and getting me hooked. Um, okay, number nine, Kate. Yes. Number nine is something I've mentioned before, but I did want to bring it up again because it's a great time to reflect over the summer. And that is actually spending time reflecting on the 10 things that bring Mm. you the most joy and the 10 things you currently spend the most money on, writing these down and thinking how you can more align what you want to spend money on because it brings you joy and what you're currently spending money on. And so um, the common example is if you really love going out and spending time on experiences with friends and family, but you don't really care where you live or if there's a view, you just want a roof over your head, then maybe there's ways you can save on your living expenses by living in a share house or finding something a bit smaller mm. or you don't maybe need the balcony or the garden, though I think in lockdown we all appreciated having a bit oh, of space. Absolutely. Yeah. And then you can adjust the spending so you spend similar amounts of money but you spend more in areas that bring joy to your life rather than spending money on areas that you're like oh i don't really care either way if i've got a really nice place or just an average place and i think this is a thing right we well i tend to do this is i spend money and i find that if i do a reconciliation at the end of the week i spend money like frivolously on little things mm. and i'm like at the time it sounded cool to have that extra cup of coffee or um, I don't want to pick on coffee because everyone, almost every finance person does, but we think like, oh, sh-, you know, that t-shirt or that sounded good at the time. And we do that reconciliation. And it's actually the process of not necessarily the money, but the happiness side of things. That's yeah. really important to think about, did it actually make me any happier? Mm. And, you know, there are big things in life, like does a house make you happier? Does it not? Does renting in this particular spot make you happy? I find people when they do this exercise, and I'm going to do it again at Christmas. I've already done it this year, but I'm going to do it again. because It's I a good think thing it's a to good do time. each year because yeah. it, it changes. I think a lot of our priorities have changed over the last 12 months. Absolutely, especially over the last 12 months. Yeah. Like Before COVID, everyone was like, you know, I'm going to maybe save for a house and I'm going to do this and do that. And now they're like, heck, I want to get out of here. Yeah. I want to go on a bit, I want to go away for two or three weeks, three months, whatever. Mm. And that you know list of priorities has radically changed for a lot of people so now is a great time to do it and that's number nine was 10 things 
uh, do the 10 things, I guess, activity, yeah. which is um, available on Rask Education. We'll put it in the show notes. Number 10, which is uh, fascinating because we've already covered it, but it's, it's something that I think from a human psychology point of view, it just works. And that's why I find it fascinating. It's just automate your accounts. Yeah. We've already mentioned it, but just getting it done, setting it up over Christmas. This is a time when you have time. Yeah. It's just an opportunity for you to say, okay, I'm going to save this much and that's going to go straight into my brokerage account or it's going to go straight to my robo-advisor. I know you do this with managed funds. You just send the money off, done. And that's been super effective mm. for you, right? They even take the money on my behalf. I oh, don't even have you to did. send it off. It's well, great. They're very nice. So <laughs> you've said, nice? so you yes. found the fund manager or the robo advisor, and you've said, yeah. you put in all your information and they're just automatically doing that every month. Yeah. And that helps me just because during the year, life gets really hectic as I imagine it does for most listeners. Mm. And when it comes to these really good financial decisions that are going to help you in the future, you want to take out as much friction as possible and make it easy. But then when it comes to spending money and maybe doing things that might harm you in the future because you're spending money in an unintentional manner and you might have regrets for doing that, add some friction to the process. And I've seen that work in sometimes people put a sticker on their um, their debit card saying, do I actually want this? Or maybe mm -hmm. putting a limit and saying, this year, if I'm spending over $50 on a discretionary item, I'm going to wait 24 hours before I purchase it yeah. to actually think it through properly and avoid those impulse decisions or even avoiding situations where you could be put in a situation. So I know sometimes when people are trying to kill an hour waiting for their friend to meet them up, they just wander through the shopping mall and then they end up buying something they weren't <laughs> going to buy before or just buying extra food. Mm -hmm. I kind of do that with food, which is why I try to avoid uh, just waiting in just a food court in the because food court. <laughs> you yeah. end up spending money um, and then go, actually, I'm going to go for a walk and explore the city for an hour while I'm waiting to meet up with my friend. And that's, I find that's a good way to avoid that impulse spending because I didn't actually need that food item or that the discretionary item. I was just doing it to fill in time. Mm. So finding what your triggers are and how to be a bit more intentional. And I mean, this has gone off topic from automating your accounts, but, no, but, yeah, but it's adding a bit of friction when it comes to maybe less positive financial decisions. Yeah. And I think the way I, the way I conceptualized this a few years ago, when I set up out on this finance journey was you have your jar and you can only fit so much in it, mm. right? So you put the big things, the most important things in first, that's that 10 things activity. Yeah. The one just before this. And all of those big things, like your rent, your, your mortgage, your investing, your health insurance, and looking after yourself, I think those things are the things you should be automating as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Then what that means is you've got the big things right. The big things just happen. All the little things that you do can just fall into place around that. Yeah. So yeah, if you do end up wandering off in the food court and getting a Macca's chips, so be it. But at least the big things, because you said this before, before we recorded, you know, you put money aside into this fund manager and you've got the robo-advisor and without them, you would have kind of, you probably wouldn't have done it. Mm. So it's, it's, I think you got those big things correct. Number 11, Kate, the final one of our savings yes. tips um, for 2022. What is it? So this is just a more of a different budgeting method. And if you've found that the traditional spreadsheet hasn't worked for you or using even a budgeting Which is app, most people, to be honest. Yeah. Using a reverse budget where you, instead of, so working out on average what you spend each month, say it's $2,000 mm -hmm. and then putting that money in a separate bank account and then dividing $2,000 by 30 days or how many other days there are in the month and sort of having that money automatically transfer into your transaction account on a daily basis. So every day you get paid one thirtieth of $2,000. And so you don't see this $2,000 and go, oh, how quickly can mm -hmm. I spend it yep. for the month? And you're suddenly, it's three days before you get paid and you go, oh, I can't actually afford to go out. Yep. Whereas this, um, it kind of works a bit on your psychology. Instead of seeing that huge lump sum, you see, oh, I've only got $100 in my account today. Yep. And so once I spend that, that's it. And so slowly um, having that money automatically move into your transaction account each month. So that's quite, there was an app that started, um, a company that started trying to solve this problem using mm -hmm. this method, but I don't know if it got enough traction. I think it closed down. Um, but I did think it was a really cool concept. And another thing that's worked for me this year um, on this topic is using Up Money, which we've got no affiliation with, but um, they, you can automatically split your paycheck into different things. So you yeah. might have an entertainment account, all sorts of things like that. And then you can um, cover payments. So you might spend $50 going out and you can click cover and it will automatically pull the money from that particular savings account. They're right. more like folders, but... Yeah. Because you don't have to have a brand new BSB and account number for everyone. You can just have 20 different 
yep. folders. Um, and that, that works quite well as well because then you can see where the money's coming from and allocated accordingly. That's great. Yeah, just kind of breaking up mm. where the money is It's like the modern coming spreadsheet from. almost yeah. where but using emojis and like clever software. Mm. Some people like the idea of having a spreadsheet because it helps them plan, you know, budgeting to investing to basically their life. They like to the act of having that kind of yeah. system in place, which I get. But let's be honest, I'd say for a lot of people, maybe even most people, like the majority of people, mm traditional budgeting does not work and one of the reasons that i think it doesn't work is because we put the numbers ahead of our psychology yeah. we talked about this in our interview with morgan housel um it's more to do with how you behave so it's how you live your life and how you want to live your life i think a lot of people like myself maybe don't live as deliberately as a budget would like us to live so we're a bit more random yeah and, and it's hard to fall into a specific category. Yeah. I, I mean, guarantee that if you say I'm going to spend $200 on entertainment each month, you're not going to come in exactly at $200 yeah. and then it stuffs up the whole thing. Yeah. So my approach is just be very kind of flexible with your own kind of lifestyle yeah. and understand your lifestyle and what you want to get out of it. But then the other thing is if you are one of those people who are not saving right now, you are not alone. Start with 1%. Literally, like we say, you know, maybe the gold standard's 20 or 30%. Uh, if you are getting super, that's a, a bonus. Um, but if you can get to that, wonderful. But a lot of people can't. And so don't be disheartened by that. Just take it in your stride and be like 1% this week or 1% this month and just build up from there. That snowball will eventually work. The habits will take over and, mm -hmm. and you'll get there. And I think that's important. I don't know if I mentioned the goal setting episode, but it's just making that goal so small that you're almost laughing at it. Even yep. if it's transferring $1 a week to your savings account. It's about slowly building that habit. I mean, during lockdown for me, it was just put on my runners and leave the front door each day. Yep. And so even if I didn't go for a long walk or a long run, it was at least getting outside. And I knew once I got out the door, I was actually gonna walk further than just one or two steps. Yep. So it's just, you make it so small that it's just laughable. And then you're actually more likely to take that first step and then you can increase it over time yeah that's it we, we, we don't just walk out of the door and go i'm just gonna run a marathon now yeah. <laughs> like i'll just go out just for a walk well you It'll might be, yeah. <laughs> just, yeah that's what i said about being uh, having a flexible budget <laughs> so um that that caps off our 11 tips for saving money in 2022 yes. now we're going to transition to investing and so you made a good point at the start of the show that we are talking about both and they're both equally important important a lot of people I don't want to single out the males, but I'm going to do it anyway. A lot of us like to jump straight to investing without sorting out our finances, but both of them are important. One famous investor once said to me, you can't invest your way out of a savings mistake. Mm. So keep that in mind. So, And it's hard to invest if you don't have any savings to start with. That's it. Like, and unless, your yeah. emergency fund and you've paid off debt. So there's a lot of foundations you need to lay first before just diving into the deep end, I yeah, think. That's it. And you don't want to put yourself in pressure or under pressure when you are trying to be a long-term investor and then all of a sudden you've yeah. got a credit card over on the side here that's charging you 22% or something. Yeah, and you want to clean it all that up. It can be very scary to get started. So you want to alleviate all of those other financial pressures before you begin, really. Yeah, absolutely. And this is a good transition into number 12 on our list, which is pick one financial topic and do a deep dive I think this is fantastic. Mm. Um, it could be anything. Yeah. Like it doesn't have to be like. Supplies to our new and our experienced members of our community. Yeah. Yeah. It could be like if, if you've listened to every single episode of the Australian Finance Podcast. Well, first of all, that's amazing. But second of all, um, you have a lot of patience. Thirdly, yeah. <laughs> thirdly um, I just think you could learn anything. Yeah. And that's the thing. That's what enables finance to be so interesting is that and investing in particular is because there's always something new to learn mm. and if you treat it that way it actually becomes very exciting so you could be wanting to learn how a particular industry works you could want to you know get up to date with the best budgeting whatever the case might be go on the hunt for good health insurance pick one mm. go into it and do it well yeah and then let us know yeah and then <laughs> you us, can become the expert in your that. friends and family and actually start yeah. to educate them about it yeah i mean i think becoming an expert on super is a really good thing especially as a young person you can kind of become a yep. evangelist as that's <laughs> it yeah probably could pick the word, <laughs> word there but um and, and share that <laughs> knowledge of super with all your friends and family because that would be amazing for them as well yeah when you rock up to the footy club or to the netball club and everyone's like oh, there's the there's, there's the super, the super, super, person. super person over there uh, not all heroes wear capes Kate. No. okay so number 13 what is it 
Now, similar to automating your bank accounts is setting up a regular investment plan because Mm. there's just so many decisions one can make. And whether it's just transferring $500 every month when you get paid to a special account that you're going to use to invest once it gets to $1,000 or $2,000, whether it's setting up a regular contribution to a micro-investing app like Raise, Mm -hmm. Um, just getting started on a regular basis because... As we like to say, small bits, lots of times. Investing isn't just saving up to $10,000, investing that, and then just sitting back for the rest of your life. You do want to invest on a regular basis. And if you do it on a regular basis, you don't have to be investing large amounts. The Mm. small amounts, if you have a look at the Money Smart Compound Interest Calculator, actually make a massive difference. And even... I think we've talked about before this year on in terms of super, even just putting mm. $10 extra a month into your super account as a personal contribution can make a massive difference over 40, 50 years. Totally. Yeah, that's what I was doing when I was a contractor, just chipping away at it. And mm. I've said this before on the show, I'm going to say it probably a hundred times before we um, end this season, is um, the money smart calculator changed my life. Yeah. Once I realized how little effort I had to put in up front to get a massive reward at the end, I always thought that people that were wealthy at like 30, 40, 50, 60, whatever, I thought that they always came from money. I always yeah. thought they, oh, they're, there's no way I could get to that. There's no way that I could, you know, little old me, I could save that amount of money and have a house and be comfortable and provide for my family and that, all that stuff. And once I saw that, hey, I could just do like 100 bucks a month, if I start today, yeah. this is going to have a huge impact on where I am at in 20 or 30 years. And the, the punchline is, and this is something that you covered in your fire course, which is brilliant, is that even if it is a hundred bucks a month, just a hundred bucks a month or a hundred bucks a week or whatever you can afford, you don't have to do it for forever. That's the key. Mm. The key is just doing it early and getting started today. And so when I say early, I don't mean in your teens. I don't mean in your twenties. I don't mean in your thirties. What I mean is literally today, today. <laughs> just start it because that's all you need to do. So fantastic at number 13. Number 14, which is an episode that we've covered separately, which is dipping your toe into micro investing or fractional investing. Both um, slightly different things, but both of them are fantastic ways to start Mm -hmm. investing. Some of us are put off when we think that it's $500 to buy one share in Comsec or, you know, in your self-wealth or your stake account. How much do I actually need? All that sort of stuff many of the modern platforms kind of do away with that and it makes it super easy. Yeah, and I think it's just taking that first step. You might just take that very first step and then spend a few months learning, but even just getting a stake account, as I was saying to one of our colleagues, and just buying $50 worth of your favorite company, Mm -hmm. um, which might be Apple or Adobe or Tesla at the moment or whatever it is, just so you get that feeling of investing for that very first time. And once you've got a a bit of skin in the game, it completely changes. You're actually a lot more interested in what's happening, What, how does this whole process work? And you start becoming a lot more interested in the world. And I think it's, even if it's just $50, just get started. And then that'll help you really be interested throughout the whole journey. Yeah. And I think this is the thing. So you can, if you do the roundup features, say with like Ray's in this instance, this is an example, um, you might find that you're starting with a very small balance, but then after a year, that habit has mm. formed and all of a sudden, hey, I've got $500 in there. I've got $1,000, got $2,000. You can keep it in there yeah. or you can take it out and then invest it in something else. The and key, there's more key and is, more platforms that allow yeah. you to start small. Like, yeah. I mean, I can Sharesies. list a couple. Yeah, Sharesies came over from New Zealand. We yep. spoke to Brooke Rog- Roberts, one of the co-founders. Uh, Spaceship, yep. uh, along with Ray's micro-investing apps. Stakes just opened um, As- to the ASX. ASX. Yep. Um, so I think they required... Um, like $500 minimum investment, but the US platform is you can buy your $50 of yep. Adobe shares, whatever you want. Um, Superhero is another one yep. that came out in the last year or two. Yeah, so two, just, two years ago, was it? Yeah. yeah. There's so many platforms that allow you to just get started and it's a, a lot less scary than having to go, oh, I need $1,000 before I buy my first ETF or share. For sure. Yeah. So number four is, uh, number 14 is dip your toe in with micro investing and fractional investing. Number 15, which we've alluded to already, is probably the lowest effort for highest reward thing you'll ever do with your money. And that is sorting out your super. Yeah, there is billions and billions of dollars of Mm -hmm. unclaimed super in Australia just because people have had 
different super accounts as they've moved jobs. And that started to change now because we've the government's introduced stapled super. So once you've got a super account, it becomes attached to you and your yeah. tax file number and it'll follow you around. But chances are, if you've been in a few hospitality jobs, retail jobs over the years, when you're at uni, you do have a few super accounts floating around. So head to the MyGov website, link it with your, I think it's the ATO account. Yeah, it's the ATO account. Um, yeah. And then it will look at your tax file number and find any of the super accounts linked to your name. And then you can you can research each one and choose to consolidate into one particular one that you like or just move it all into a new account because you're, mm. you've are you decided all of the ones you're in aren't very good. Um, and we've got lots of examples in a yeah, few Yeah, we did that super. episode where we went through the, the PDS of Australian Super and Australian Ethical yep. and we showed you what to look for. So if you're new to super in, in, in any sense of the word, go and have a look at those episodes that were done maybe the middle of this year. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, yeah, we shared our screens and we showed you how we would look at super funds mm-hmm. and all the different investment strategies. Just on this, two things. One is there's a chance you may not be getting paid super. Yep. The easiest way to check is to go into your super fund and check. Now, there is your employer has some discretion. They don't have to pay it every month. They can pay it every quarter, which is what we recently did here at RASC. We used to do it every month. But then as our employee numbers just got bigger and bigger and bigger, we thought, geez, well, let's just do this every quarter so it's a bit less of a headache. Um, and so that's the first thing to check. Are you getting paid? If not, speak to your employer. If they still don't pay you, that's illegal. They should be. They have to be paying you. Even if you're not a full-time employee, you still have to get super. Mm. So you can take it up with your accountant. They'll know what to do. Or you can head over to, I think Money Smart has information on this as well. Yeah. Check that out. Um, the second thing is that what I hear all the time is, oh, I'm going to switch super funds so I'm in the right, so I'm going to get a better return. Keep in mind that the super fund itself might have 10 different options. You may mm-hmm. not need to change super funds. So you might find you're in the cash option, which yeah, that's it. It might just be doing what it says on the tin, being that, invested in cash. And that might be a reason you haven't actually performed. Yeah. And you might be go, oh, I actually want to be in the balanced or the growth fund. And you can, all the super funds, if you're a member now, you can call them and they've got experts that you can talk to and say am i in the right option what are the other options available if you want to invest more ethically you can ask them what the fund is investing in is it invested in particular areas you don't Mm. want to be invested in yeah and so it would be like if you have a bank just to say you're with commonwealth bank you know if we did a survey of all of our listeners we might have people that bank with commonwealth bank that are with then have 50 different bank accounts inside of commonwealth (laughs) bank um so the point is that it may not be Commonwealth Bank that you need to switch away from. You might just need a better option from the super fund that you're already with. So keep that in mind before you go and switch because, you know, you might have you might have your insurance in there. You might have a bunch of other stuff that you can't really afford to let go of. Number 16, Kate, I'll let you introduce this one. Yes. Investing in your health in 2022. I think it's more important now than ever. Mm-hmm. And uh I don't know if I've coined this phrase, but uh, there's no point being wealthy and dead. Uh, So (laughs) I'll claim it. Um, it, So just like a gym subscription isn't a waste of time if you actually use it. Spending money going to the physio, if you've got that back that's been causing problems for a few years and you've just never done anything about it, actually going to the dentist and getting a checkup and a clean, like all these are good things to spend money on because you there's no point getting to 50, 60, 70 and not actually being able to move and enjoy your money. You might be planning to travel in 10 years time, but you want to actually be able to enjoy the trip and not be stuck in a wheelchair. So um, just sure. making sure you invest in your health and well-being um, is really important and don't, don't sacrifice everything, including your health for your financial goals. Yeah. You need to find a balance. I actually got up my phone. Um, for those of you that are watching this, you can see it. I got up my phone while Kate was saying that and I thought about this because we kind of talked about it loosely at the retreat that we had recently. And I thought we spend so much time, you know, automating our finances, automating everything else. Mm. Why not automate like a self-care plan? And I don't mean like the mental health plan you get from the doctor. I mean, literally just time for yourself. So on this list, I've created a list of psychologists, PT, getting a massage, going to the doctor, dentist, dietitian, whatever it is that's on your list. You might want to do them, structure them, you know, I'm going to do this in 2022 where it's like, okay, I want to see, I want to get a massage once a month. That's something I've never done before. Treat myself. So I'm going to pencil them in now for the first six months or dentist. I'm actually going to do that. So the next time I go to the dentist, it's not a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, three thousand dollars. And Once that's the thing, years. a lot of this health stuff, if you take a preventative approach, you can avoid that's it. getting that 
$3,000 dental work down yeah. the track. And even this year, I actually went proactively to the physio because I started running and I said, how can I not injure myself? What exercises can I do to strengthen my muscles for when I'm running so I don't injure myself? How should I be running better? Yeah. So doing those kind of things is really good and it might actually save you more money that's it, in the, in even the in the run, near yeah. term as yeah. well. Yeah, all over. So I think that's fantastic. Invest in your health, invest in yourself. I think this is relevant for anyone. Mm. You know, all those things that I just mentioned, you don't have to do them all. You, know, you might not be able to afford to do them all. If you're a parent and you just need some time away from the kids, you might talk to your partner and say, hey, I'm just going to go for a massage and it's only going to be half an hour, but I'm going to do that once a month and this is what I want to do. You can do your thing. This is what I want to do once a month. It's my time. I think that's a fantastic way to just keep yourself sane. Yeah. Keep yourself enjoying life as well. Speaking of, number 17 is take an Australian holiday. If you could go anywhere in Australia, Kate, in 2022, where would it be? Well, I have booked a trip to Tasmania. Oh, yes, you have. That's over to, Christmas though, isn't it? Yeah, but yeah. in 2022. Okay. So. What about if it's not Tasmania? Then? Seeing that you've already um, booked one. Where's somewhere you've always wanted to go, but you haven't yet? I mean, I've never been to Northern Territory, so I think that would okay, be quite cool, an adventure. Like Darwin or something. But the furthest I've got is Townsville, so. Nice. Okay, yeah. you can go a bit further north than that. Yeah. There's beautiful yeah. places <laughs> further north than <laughs> that, like Cairns. I managed that yep. far, but uh, I think next year will be the year for the the australian holiday yep. there are so many beautiful places to explore in our own backyard for sure um even if we're not going off to europe or whatever and i think the australian businesses really need our support as well we don't have to mm. you don't have to worry mm. about getting locked out as much maybe you're locked out in maybe, your own state maybe but, in <laughs> wa yeah um but i think i think it's good and also if you've been working non-stop the last two years that many people have um just getting away from it all if you can even just taking a weekend and going on a one hour or two hour regional trip yeah take your noodles and jump on a flight <laughs> so yeah it, i think it's a great thing if i was i mean i've always i've always gone to Cairns and port douglas because yeah. i love it um i have family in byron bay which is the reason that i'm going there um but i haven't been to noosa oh so i would love to go to noosa i hear yeah. it's beautiful here it's a little bit expensive but i hear it's beautiful so that would be nice. And Kangaroo Island. Never been to Kangaroo Island. Been to Adelaide. Never been to Kangaroo Island. So that would be lovely too, especially to support them after the fires. Um, number 18, which is one close to my heart. I had a bit of a giggle <laughs> about this um, and also cried inside at the same time, yes. which is give yourself, give your house a facelift. Yeah. Um, and I, don't, I think you and I had different interpretations of facelift of a house. Yes. So yeah. I wasn't thinking about Owen's uh, enormous renovation project. I was more thinking of... Just what are some small, simple ways? You've been in your house a lot for the last few years. Can you paint a wall? Like add a feature mm. wall, put some new pillows yep. in, maybe change the the taps or the doorknobs. Yep. Just some small things to make it feel a bit fresher and more alive. Um, and they're not going to be that expensive. Like you can paint a wall. Yeah, you can. Um, and do th fun things like that. And it doesn't have to be a whole renovation. I think when we moved into our house, we had a pink kitchen um a blue dining no a green dining area it was very multi a green a green lounge room a purple bedroom a blue bedroom a pink a blue bathroom and it just went on and on and on to so talk about this person must have taken their own tips uh, and done one every year for 10 years in a row <laughs> feature wall in every single room <laughs> That's it. yeah yeah feature rooms and it was yeah every color of the rainbow so now it's white um, I don't yeah, think we're going to... Yeah, you just went back to clean but this, this is start from scratch. So I think this is great. Um, you know what? I also heard um, of a really cool idea, which doesn't actually cost you any money, which is just... And I'm a sucker for this. I've never done this before, is just move your furniture around. Yeah. So taking the dining table and maybe putting it in a different part of the room or that lamp, move that over a different part of the room. And it's actually a creative way to make the space feel new um, and it's just easy to do and it's a, like yeah. a, a little thing um, and if you're going to go down this path make sure you use Facebook Marketplace if you want new furniture and that type of thing so I think that's a great way to do just, it if it sees the same thing in the same spot every day it just sort of blows past it it doesn't mm. even um, notice it but if you do change things up you go oh that's different yeah it's like a new space cool number 19 we're coming to the end of the list here but there yes. are some great ones number 19 invest in your happiness how would you do this yes so 2022 pick one thing that you really wanted to do over the last two years but couldn't because of lockdowns, maybe you want to go ballroom dancing or hot air Ooh, ballooning do you? or, uh, well, dancing would be fun. I don't know ballroom, but maybe I could try. Give it a crack. Just pick one crazy thing that you've wanted to do and just do it instead of putting it off again because, I don't know, the last two years have kind of told us you can't put too much off <laughs> um, and just book it in and do it. Um, like it's about finding that balance. We've 
we save, we invest, but sometimes it's actually really great to spend some money and have an amazing experience. So yeah, do something you want this year. Yep, for sure. I like it. Invest in your happiness, that 10 things activity yeah. from further up. Remember that that's the way to go. Um, number 20, this is one that's close to my heart and I yes. do it every day and I, I do one, enjoy that it. That one in I, for you, Owen. Uh, research and invest in a company that you love. So we've done the shares month in 2021, um, which was hugely popular in the community. Everyone told us how much they loved us talking about Disney and doing it at different levels as well. We had Sorry, few, guys. We had, <laughs> we'll we pick a, few, a different company next year. <laughs> yeah, if you have any um, ideas for this, we get great responses when we do the deep dive once mm. deep dives once a month but if you want us to do like a, another month of you know a whole company or an industry or something like that let us know because we love it our analyst team loves it obviously um, but this is something you can do yourself we have free courses on how to research investments whether that's a company whether it's an etf take the free course learn how to do it it could be a project and this is the whole this is what we stand for is once you learn how to do these things you don't unlearn them yeah so you can you can do it and you can do it again and again and again and the knowledge keeps building on itself as well and we've got the free five part share investing checklist which i believe i posted in the facebook community before and it's also in the rask account as yeah. well yeah if you have your rask account you'll find all of the the downloads and pdfs there um, number 21 explore thematic etfs so this might be new to some people but what does this mean yeah, so a thematic ETF is a way you can express a view in a particular industry. Mm. So in Australia, we have thematic ETFs that invest in, well, I'm going to say an example that doesn't exist yet, but um, what's an example? Like Computer semi- robotics and yep. technology, um, cloud computing. Mm-hmm. Um, hydrogen. Hydrogen, there we go, there yep. we go. Um, so you can actually, you might have your core ETF portfolio and you're invested in all of that good stuff, but you actually go, hey, I really want to invest in electric vehicles or hydrogen or mm-hmm. fintech companies. Gaming companies, yeah. Yeah, and you can't. Sort of you might not want to pick a particular company because that requires a lot of conviction, a lot of research, and you could go very wrong picking yep. an individual company yourself. Um, but you can invest in a thematic ETF for like a one to three year period to express a particular view you for have. Sure. Yeah, and this, this is a really easy way to get started investing and have a bit of excitement. So yeah, definitely we, it adds a lot more excitement to the portfolio yeah, than some it. of the core ETFs. What we say is, you know, these ETFs, you'll know when you see them because they'll be exciting. Yeah, They'll say things like the future of this, mega trend that, you know, super cycle this. These are the thematic ETFs, yeah. the boring ETFs, the Vanguard, you know, VAS or A200 mm-hmm. from Beta Shares or the STW ETF or the IVV ETF. Those are your bottom drawer ETFs. Those are the ones you stick in there and you're like, okay, I'll see you in 10 years. Yeah. These thematic ETFs are a bit riskier, but they're interesting and they keep investing exciting. You know, some people, especially older people, I, if I can say that, find when someone younger says investing is exciting, they kind of think that it's like, unbecoming or a bit naive Mm. but i think investing should be exciting to the extent that it helps you you know keep curious stay curious um and just enjoy what you're doing because i think that's a really important component of long-term investing Mm. and thematic ats is a great way to get more interested in particular industries and trends and you might even realize hey i want to work in this industry so all sorts of things that they can lead to well the hydrogen one was really interesting i don't invest in it but i just thought that was an interesting one because we saw twiggy andrew forrest uh founder of Fortescue come out and, and do the the Boyer yeah. talks about hydrogen and why it's super important for Australia to get on top of this. Um, so that was a really fascinating thing for me. And I had no idea of the difference between green hydrogen and brown hydrogen and mm. everything else under the sun. So fascinating stuff. That's number 21, explore thematic ETFs. Yes. Kate, a big shout out for number 22 <laughs> on the list of 22 ways to save and invest your money in 2022. What's the fin- final Yes. One? Finally, sorting out your investment plan for 2022. And this is a great thing to do December, January, February of the year, actually working out what do you want to invest in? Where do you want to allocate your money Mm -hmm. this year? You might not know the exact company because it's something that you'll research and learn about throughout the year, but Mm. how do you want to allocate your money? Maybe you're using a core and satellite approach. Maybe you want to keep building your ETF portfolio. Working out trying to just write down what your loose plan is. Maybe you can put some dates in, like a monthly check-in in your calendar. Um, 
some different techniques you want to try. Maybe you've heard some suggestions in a Facebook community. Oh, like I want to learn more about this. Like my investment plan includes things I want to learn about during the year as oh, well. Cool. I didn't know that. So it's yeah. kind of a, a learning and investment plan. So even just working out a way you can track it, maybe it's something you can tick off each month. Um, maybe it's putting that automation into place, just sort of bringing everything we talk about on the show together into something that works for you throughout the year. Yep. I love it. And uh, if you're a RASC ETF or a RASC Invest member, there is a DIY investment guide in the website. So you can log into your membership and you'll see it there. It depends on which membership you have. You'll find it in the website if you search for it. And it takes you through everything. It takes you through how you're going to manage your tax. What types of investments do you want mm. to make? Do you care about ESG? Um, all of these different things. So just having a plan you said this before in a different episode where we talked about having a plan enables you to reflect. Yeah. So in a year from now, as we do this episode for 2023, we'll be able to look back and say, did the investment plan make sense? Yeah. Let's go back to the drawing board and change a few things. Let's tinker here. And that's what I'm doing over the yep. next month or so. I'm going back and looking at what was the plan I mm. set at the start of 2021? Did I achieve that? I know I changed some things in the middle of the year. Was that the direction yep. I wanted to head in? Where do I want to go next year? Is this in line with my five, 10, 20 year plans, like, do they need to change? Cause things change. And so you have to just be flexible enough and it's good to reflect and whether you achieved it, you didn't, was there a reason why? Um, and just have a look at this stuff. And by writing it down, yeah. you've actually got something to come back to and reflect on. It makes it, it's, it's so important to be yeah. proactive in this regard. Otherwise you just, you just kind of investing aimlessly. It might, it doesn't have to be something massive. Yeah. So it can be on one piece of paper, it can be on a napkin, take a photo of it, put it in your notes on your phone, send it to yourself in a message, whatever the case might be, just put it down there and, and, mm. and give it a crack. So sorting out an investment plan is super important. Yeah. So Kate, we've done 22 ways to save and invest. Yes. Um, a lot there for everyone to take away. So hopefully there's at least one thing that can help yes. each of our listeners in there. Yeah, so 22 things is great. We've done 21 last year. So by my maths, that's... 43 we don't like to do maths we don't <laughs> no, like to do maths on air because time. we get this wrong um but we've done 43 mm. the community's probably got hundreds if not thousands yes so if you have something if you have a secret way to save and invest we love hearing from you yeah. these are the these are the, the episodes that are heaps of fun because they get a lot of conversations started mm. and people can just talk about money openly and share some strategies like that one about um, noodles on the plane, genius. Yeah, and right? think genius. about all the other places in life, like when you're going out to the movies, taking your own yeah. snacks in. I don't yeah, know if that's it. allowed, but... But we'll say it is. If you, yeah. if you go with someone who has a handbag or two, <laughs> you might be able to squeeze something in your own pods rather than spend 10 bucks on pods and at the And it just comes back to cinema. being prepared. Yeah. Because if the place is going to overcharge you, you can come prepared. Even if you only do a couple of these things, like I'm going to bring it up again. I, I just... Because, I, and I know I bang on about it, but the honey thing costs absolutely <laughs> nothing to do. It costs nothing. Yeah. And you save so much money. It's not even, it's a no joke. Um, I love it. Um, but even like the, the, the first one was like, basically you could detox your finances, which means subscriptions. Yeah. Cancel your card, get a new one in a couple of days. And then that way they automatically cancel anyway. Um, you can savings even freeze out. your card. Yeah, you can, can't you? you so can, yeah, you can, that would probably you can lock have the it, same effect. You? Yeah, and sometimes you can do that in your app. I know yeah. for our business account, we can just lock it from the app yeah. if we lose it Maybe or whatever. Maybe just do that for 30 days and see what emails just you see get. See what falls out, yeah. Reverse budgets, that's something new to me. The 10 Things activity is a free download. It's also available, I believe, in your Rask account. Just on the in your account page there, you'll see the PDF um, or in the course that Kate's done, the FIRE course, it's there. Free download put the 10 things that you care about that bring you happiness and then 10 things you spend money on, draw a line between them. Yep. They might not even have a line between them because you might be spending on things that bring you no happiness, <laughs> in which case, f figure that out. Time to change. Yeah, <laughs> micro-investing, compounding, sorting your super out. There is so much here. Invest yeah. in your happiness. Give your house a facelift. <laughs> I might do that in 2023, if I'm honest, because I've done a lot of facelift. I've done a fr full like nose job. Yeah, and you've done a whole body lift. There's a body <laughs> I don't lift. know if that's a thing, but yeah, yes. that's what you've done. Yeah. And Australian holidays, um, it seems like you and I have both got something planned yeah. over Christmas, but I think there'll be more to come next year. So, mm. so much to do on this list, but it's all pretty easy. And it's all a bit of fun. So Kate, as always, thanks for a great year. And 
thanks for joining me on the Australian Finance Podcast. Absolutely, Owen. And thank you, everyone, for listening to this episode. Mm -hmm. Um, Let us know how you go with some of these tips. Absolutely.